Today we're going to be going over integrating existing products into your woodworking projects through the means of digital fabrication. I'm going to be using my CNC machine to carve out a pocket and a piece of wood so that this sits in it as snugly as possible. There's a lot of different ways to go about this process, but I'm going to walk you through how I do it using different tools such as shape or trace and just a good old measuring tape. None of this is sponsored by anybody, not Infinity, not by shape or trace, nobody. This is all the tools that I use on a weekly basis in order to integrate different things into the projects that I'm looking to create. Hopefully this little peek behind the curtain is gonna be helpful for some of y'all who are looking to do the same thing in your own shop. Just seeing the way that I do things, I know that's how I learn the best. But maybe some of y'all have a lot quicker and easier ways to do this as well. There's certainly a lot of different ways to skin a cat. So let's go ahead and jump in and figure out how we're going to integrate this into our project. Now we're not looking to do anything crazy today. I just want to be able to take this rectangular piece of silicone. It's a mat and I'm going to be putting in um, soap pumps into this. And I really don't want to have those soap pumps directly on wood because that's just a recipe for disaster long term. This is going to be something that we can keep in the bathroom and make sure that it's not getting a ton of black mold on it or anything. And it's just easily cleanable and we can take this out of the project. Now our main project is going to be cut out of a different wood but for all this prototyping we're going to be using poplar so that we're hopefully going to be creating two different versions of this and by versions I mean the tolerance that we're putting on the outside. One of them I'm going to be doing at 0.01 inches as an offset of this from the vectors that we're able to create and then the other one's going to be at a 0.02 offset and we're just going to see which one of those feels better in the process. Now sometimes it's going to be as simple as just measuring how how high and how wide it is, and you're gonna flop that in there. The interesting thing about this is we have a radius on the side, and I have no idea what that radius is. There's certainly a lot of different ways to be able to figure that out, and this is one of the more simple things that we're looking at, but knowing that this came from overseas, I highly doubt that this is going to be in an imperial measurement, so we're probably dealing with metric, and I really want this to be as close and tight as possible. Now, upon first glance, we can quickly and easily identify that this is four inches wide by a little bit under 12 inches long. And that's gonna be really important because the Amazon listing says four by 12. So you could automatically assume that this is gonna be four by 12 and it's probably gonna leave you a little bit more slop in there than you're really looking for. So those two measurements, pretty easy to define. Now, one of the things that I use in the shop almost every single day is a set of calipers. And these are not the nicest thing in the world, but they're certainly not the cheapest ones in the world either. For a very long time, I bought the plastic ones on Amazon. And not only did they just not keep true, the batteries died all the time. Uh, this one is a little bit more, I'll have a link down below, but this is actually one that I use and it automatically turns off for when I forget to turn it off. These are really great for small measurements. So being able to quickly and easily define how wide this piece is, we can see that it is 3.968 inches wide, which is really, really important because we're trying to be exact for this. But once we get down into the length, we can only measure up to six inches, which is great. If, the, if you're buying a caliper for really cheap and it says it'll go up to 24 inches, the longer your calipers go, the more difficult it is going to be for it to keep an exact measurement, unless you're paying like a lot of money on like a stare at tool or something like that. So six inches obviously is not getting us as close as we need to, to be able to measure the length of this. So at this point, we're kind of relying on a tape measure. Now, if you have a bunch of different tape measures in the shop, you're probably going to at some point be an eighth or even a quarter of an inch off because different tape measures, unfortunately, are marked differently. Not all tape measures are created equally. I used fast cap ones in my shop. Uh, they've got like an integrated pencil sharpener, which I've never used. They've got a little integrated whiteboard, which I've never used, but they are very cheap and they're very reliable. So if you're purchasing a few different tape measures for your shop, I would probably try and stick with the same brand. I've got like six different brands and I've measured them a few different times and unfortunately they're not all the same. So if you start a project with a specific tape measure, I would finish that project with that same tape measure. One of the things that I have learned to do is instead of relying on this very first inch, you've got the little bit of slop that's accounted for for these tape measures. I always move over to the first inch mark and line that up directly with what it needs to be on the very end so that I can quickly and easily see exactly what we're looking at. We've got 11 and 7 eighths and then right here let's remeasure that with the calipers. We've got 3.964. So those are our two measurements that we're going to be having for our length and our width 
easy enough to do. So the thing that you're integrating into your project, the more intricate that it is, the harder that it is for somebody else to be able to rip off that design is going to make your product stand out that much more. So with this, like I said, fairly simple. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our Shaper Trace. I bought this without my own money. It's around a hundred bucks, I think. So all this is is a picture frame and it integrates with an app. There's a whole lot of really cool stuff behind it, but all you need to know is that we're going to be putting down the very edge of our piece. Now, if this would fit completely in this frame, we would be able to trace out this whole thing. And that's the only limitation that I've been able to find from the Shaper Trace, is just the size of it, unfortunately. But what we can do with this is we can put the very edge of it in and just get these two radiuses so that we can flip that over, mirror the vectors, and be able to push it over onto the other side as well because we know the length of the final project. All right, so we're in Carveco Maker, and this is kind of what we've got. I've gone ahead and established the size of our material, which is 12 by 19 and a half and then we have our vectors here that were created with the shaper trace now this will be a lot easier if it could fit inside the shaper trace but since it did not we are now just trying to figure out the radius of these sides I've gone ahead and drawn a circle and then through a lot of trial and error with the transforming tool I've been able to figure out that this circle is the one that we need to emulate now its width and height is 2.3 inches. And in order to get the radius off of that, we're just going to be dividing it by two to be able to match the radius of here, which divided by two would be 1.15 inches. Now that's important because we are about to completely make this vector. So we're gonna go over and draw a rectangle. This rectangle is gonna be defined by the dimensions that we pulled off of the silicone map. So the width is going to be 11.8, 75 and then the height is going to be 3.964 and then the corner radius like we just said is going to be 1.15 1 1.15 and then we're going to create now that's our silicone mat and you can come over here and this should match up boom directly with the radius that we had there we go now this is the size of our actual silicone mat and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be offsetting these vectors. So what you have right here is the actual size of that silicone mat and if you cut the hole for the direct size of the silicone mat there is a chance that it will be too tight and then you're just trying to stuff it down in there and it's I'm probably going to have too much tension built into it. So that's why we need to offset these vectors. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to do the first one at point zero 0.01 and I'm going to offset it to the right. Boom, there we go. Now that fresh vector is the one that we're wanting to mess with. So that is the pocketed hole that we're trying to deal with and we're gonna put that one up top and then we are gonna be doing that again at point zero 0.02 inches. Now the reason that we're doing this is just to show you the different gaps that you are making with this process and we're just trying to figure out which one is going to be better for us for this. Now I'm going to offset that and then we're going to take those vectors and then bring them down here. So our bottom one is going to be offset by 0 0.02 inches and our top one is going to be offset by 0 0.01 inch which means that the top one is probably going to have a tighter fit the bottom one is a little bit looser fit and that's really going to depend on the type of object that you're trying to quote unquote inlay into this hole now we don't need this middle vector anymore and the last thing that we're going to be doing is coming through and offsetting these each one more time so that we have a border so we're going to offset a quarter of an inch outwards to the right and then right here as well offset that a quarter of an inch as well that's going to be pretty close um, but I think it's going to look really good um, if you're interested in the toolpathing tutorial for this all this will be available on CNC with me as well as just a deeper look into this project overall but we have now been able to create our vectors. I'm gonna go through and toolpath that and I will see y'all back over at the CNC machine. So it is time for this week's mystery file. If you're lost right now, don't worry. Mitz sends me some mystery G code. I load it into the controller and then we just see what happens. The only instructions that I've been given are to load in a 60 degree V bit and we're just gonna see what happens. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zero it out, 60 degree V bit, press go and see what happens. This ain't no internet cafe. Wipe, don't swipe. I think that Mitz made this one uh, PG for the YouTube channel. <laughs>
Thanks, Mitz. <laughs> Just so we don't lose anything, I'm going to put 0 0.01 up top and 0 0.02 down the bottom. So now that we have made our file, we've loaded it up, I have all the toolpathing done, and we're just gonna be using one bit for this, our downtown Jenny. Now, some of y'all might think that using the bowl cut bit would be a little bit better of an option, and I agree for most cases. But the bottom of this has a 90 degree angle, and we want this to fit in as closely as we can possibly get it. And all of this is just prototyping, so one bit. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, this is one of the only three bits that you need to see and see with me on every single project on this channel moving forward. We're only gonna be using these three bits. So if you have these three bits, you can make anything that you see on this channel 2024 forward. So now that I've zeroed the machine, we're just going to go ahead and pocket out all these pieces and then cut them out. I do have tabs holding them in and it really doesn't matter if we're freeing these or not. Uh, whichever one fits the best, we're probably going to just do a quick round over just to show you the finished product of it. But the main point of this video is to be able to show you all the process that I go through in order to do this. Um, I'm like 80% confident this is gonna work out. And if not, then we will just keep on going until we figure out how to perfectly sit this down into its pocket. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is the silicone mat is 0.67 inches thick, and I went ahead and cut down 0.68 inches thick. And that's gonna just allow for a little bit of variation in the top of our product. If you're using something like plywood, you're gonna have a very even thickness, but when you're going to hardwood, and specifically something that you're just getting straight from the lumber store, you might have a little bit of variation. So that pocket is is 0 0.01 inches lower than the thickness of our silicone mat, just so you know. So the 0 0.02 inch offset definitely is the way that I'm gonna be moving forward. The 0 0.01 was just a little bit too tight and that could be a little bit of my measuring along the way, but that's kind of the whole point of this video is everybody's gonna be doing this process a little bit differently, but this is just how I work through mine. Whenever you are adding in some type of a finished product into your product, it's always going to bring a few difficulties along the way, but something like this can definitely help set you aside. Now for the 0.01 inch, it's just, it's tight, which is good. It's just a little bit too tight for my liking. And the 0 0.02 is just tight enough. Now I went ahead and ran all of this over with a 3 16 inch round over bit and then took it over to the belt sander just to clean up the sides a little bit. But I am very happy with this overall. I do think that keeping the depth the exact same as the thickness of the silicone mat probably would have a little bit, been a little bit better, but there is a little bit of room to sand that off if you need to. I definitely wanted it below the surface rather than above the surface. And best case scenario, at least in my particular instance, would be to be completely flat with the surface. Overall, this is something that now looks like, in my opinion, a much better product. Now, some of y'all might've noticed in that time-lapse how long it took for me to cut this out. And that's because we are constantly messing around with the feeds and speeds on CNC with me. We have a complete downloadable tool library for Carveco, Vectric, and Fusion 360, where the three bits that you need to CNC with me, the HD beginner bits, are constantly evolving. So in the next few weeks, we'll be releasing version two of our tool database. And this one was, I was working on a tool database and I completely forgot that I was auto assigning these tool paths to this. So it took a little bit longer. Honestly, this machine is more than capable to ramp down to full depth that we were doing and then cut this out in like five minutes. But I was closer to 40 minutes on these because of my step down. It was funny when I first started, I thought it would be faster for me to stop the program, go in, reassign all the tool paths, come out here and run it. But thankfully, I've got a lot of projects going on right now in the wood shop. In just a week, I'm going to be tearing down this machine. It's going to be headed down to a convention in Atlanta for WorkbenchCon. And we're going to be setting it up. And Onefinity is going to be using this to show off for their booth because I'm just so close in Atlanta. There's no reason for them to ship down machines and stuff. And they are a breeze to disassemble and reassemble. And thankfully, I have the Onefinity team over here to be able to help me do all that. Carveco is coming over as well. We're gonna be shooting some stuff here in the shop and I'm really excited about that. I will notify y'all when that video comes out. It will be on their channel, I'm pretty sure. Also a few other little things that I'm excited about too. Now this project is carrying on a concept that the next two weeks are going to be involved with. We're gonna be making a jewelry tray. Next week we're gonna be making the little jewelry boxes or kind of just jewelry holders that will sit onto the jewelry tray. So we're gonna split that project up into two different weeks because each project can exist by itself 
And a portion of that, the second week, is going to be talking about taking existing products and implementing them into your project. So hopefully this was helpful for you all to be able, as you're browsing Amazon or Etsy or you see something that might look nice, to be able to implement into your projects that maybe some of this information was helpful. Huge thanks to all the CNC With Me members. It's actually funny because I'm about to go live on CNC With Me in... 21 minutes. <laughs> I've got to go and make a few graphics for that, but we just have a blast over there. For all you CNC With Me members, I appreciate y'all so much. If you don't know what that means, go ahead and head over to cncwithme.com. We have a massive community, tons of projects. That's where these files for this particular project will be available, not only in SVG and DXF, but also Carveco and Vectric files will be ready and available for you to be able to save your G code and immediately run this on your machine. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch today, and I will see you later, or next Friday. Bye.